Use the art of inhuman. It is combat. Without, you guys move this. It's, it's, it's combat. It's combat utilizing, utilizing the parts of your body as a weapon. You know, it doesn't matter what part. Every part of your body, you know, from the outside, inside, inside out. You know, the inside is also used. You know, to to be able to the inside is to, is the part which conditions you. Is where the po source of power comes from. So it's a weapon. Power is a weapon. Speed is a weapon. It's, it makes up. It's all the components that makes up fighting. You know. So you know you, you're not just punching, but you're punching with some kind of force. And that force has to be generated somewhere. So it's generated from the inside. You know, just because you have muscles don't mean that the muscle is, you know, the character of the muscle is able to be effective in terms of force. A lot of people have muscles, but they don't have the strength, right? So you have to muster that strength, and so you have to condition yourself. So it's outside in, inside out. So everything, every part of you is a weapon. That's, that's the nature of martial arts. That's the nature of ninjutsu. So what you have to learn now, Tai Sabat, moving, moving, maneuvering, you know, from one point to the other, get out of the way, to get out of the way of a strike, of an attack, to move in position so that you can count, so you can be in position to count with some proficiency, some effectiveness. So, you know, all that's part. So, so now your movement also is a weapon. The movement is coordinated with, the, with striking and blocking. Your blocking is, is, is a, a form in which you're, what you're defending yourself. It deflects the block. But see, in our system, the block is a strike as well. So it's a weapon in that sense. So every, everything that makes up the system and the method of fighting is all part of your arsenal. Right? Now, form is very important, what they call kamai. Kamai is very important. I emphasize that. So when you're doing the drills, it's very important that you do the drills with, with you know, like with some input, you know, and with some consci consciousness, you know, that you really emphasize when you're going, your, and when you're in your side stands, your horse stands, or your front stands, or whatever, the back stands, that you emphasize and you make sure that you are really take, partaking in making sure your form is intact. So don't, just don't be, able, don't stand any old kind of way. You know, you know, it looks like a horse stands, or, you know, or feels like one. No, make sure you're in those. Forms. You know, it's important because these are all, especially like your forms and postures, is your foundation in terms of, you know, how you, how effective your system, how effective your method or your techniques are going to be. And uh, and then it's, it's all, it also plays upon how effective in in terms of your development. You know, how you develop it. So you can't, so it's just like you, you can't build a house off an inch. And it's just an inch. But you build it off that inch. Everything goes off that inch. Every time you build that house off that inch, to, the, to when it's completed, it's off its foundation. It's not sturdy. And at some point, that inch is gonna pay. You're gonna pay for that inch being off like that. So it's the same thing. That's relative to what we do in terms of how you develop. You have to build your technique and your, your martial arts on strong principles. And strong principles can, and entails strong foundations. Everything must be taken into consideration. There is nothing wasted. Every move that you make, whether it's a strike, whether it's standing fixed, a, a standard or fixed stands, or whether you're moving, everything is taken into consideration that it's an art. Every part of what you do is an art. And that's how you have to approach it in that sense. Okay? So now for the for the new belts and the old belts it's a, re it's a review. But we're gonna go over some moves that you've been working out and you've been dealing with. And a lot of it's like basic moves, you know, like you're doing the punching and drills. Now, punching has a form to it. You know, we do when we exercise, when we do drills, we do like the karate punches here. Reverse. That is introduced so that you can strengthen the method of fight, of punching. There's a method of punching in that sense. And so you can concentrate the force and you can focus your energy and you can focus form. And in the form of your fist, you know, you just can't make a fist any old kind of way. If you miss, make a light fist and you punch somebody, you can 
hurt your hand or break your fingers. So you know that the fist has to be tight from here. And then it has to be formed in the proper manner where there's certain areas that you want to protrude, that you want to emphasize. You want to put more accents on. And accent is on the two knuckles. In some of the karate, it's the two knuckles here. In some Chinese, it's the whole fist and so forth. And so we'll be adapting to all these particular methods of fighting. So you're striking, you know, here, you may think that, you know, you're sh when you strike from the, from the chamber, what we say the chamber is side, is so that you can have more impact. When you come, you have more impact coming from here. That's why we strike from here. You know, so that when we strike, you know, that shoulder and the elbow and the wrist play an important part in the mechanics of your strike, the movement, you see, from here. Right. And, that, and these are mechanics. Now, that's, that's the shell. That's the shell to strike. The filler is the power that's coming with that strike. Because you can do that. Doesn't mean nothing. Just doing this doesn't mean nothing. If there's no power behind it, it's not going to do anybody any good. So this here is to show you the method of striking, the effectiveness of striking in this fashion, but there has to be power behind it. Okay? And then your block has to be as such. Then your block has to be as such as that you're creating a barrier between you and your opponent. You know? You're defending yourself. You are, it's just like anything else. The skin is the, the first line of defense. Everything, bacteria, we got all kind of bacteria and all kind of you know, germs and everything that's coming, but the skin is fighting it up before it even gets inside. Before it gets inside your body, the, 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 it's fanning all these diseases off. It's the same principle. You're just taking that and then you're utilizing it according to what you do, according to what we do here, how we approach martial arts. You know, so your block is the first line of defense. It's a checking point. You know, person's throwing a punch, here. Now you have to bring a certain uh, mentality. You have to bring a certain character when it comes to fighting. You know, fighting, people fighting you, it takes a certain animalistic tendency that you have to bring out of that you don't normally bring out of you on normal circumstances. You don't walk around like that unless you deranged. You don't walk around like angry and you know you get ready who who's next and who you know you don't walk around like that. Most of the time you 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 walking if you downtown in the mall or whatever, you're nice and calm, you're just walking. You know, you don't expect anybody to, to attack you in a sense, but you're ready if it does happen. So you gotta learn to adapt, make those changes, the transition from calm to now you have to become vicious, you know? You have to become as, exactly in a positive manner, animal way. Right? But yet at the same time, you don't take on the, the total character of an animal, you know, like a ferocious beast. You're not a beast. So you don't just go, just, you know, just go crazy. You're, you're a human being, so you have, a, you have the ability to be focused even in a time of conflict. So you don't create the conflict, the conflict is coming through, you don't create more conflict within you. So there's a thing in Shiatsu, and Shiatsu is the, is the means in which you use you know, um, pressure, finger pressure, and learning to you understand the nature of healing. And, you, and when you understand the nature of healing, you understand the negative and the positive of everything. Everything has a negative and a positive. And you understand that, and you know what it, what it takes to bring about healing, what it takes to bring about calmness, what it takes to overcome conflict. So when fighting, you know, the guy is, he might be deranged and raging and coming at you. So you don't, you're not conflicted by that. You know, you still remain not passive. Because you can't be passive when a man, when a person is attacking you in a manner. But you're focused and you're composed. And you're, and you're able to key in on what's going on. And you're just able to, whatever energy that person, that negative energy, you snatch it and you bring in positive. Pos you know, it may seem kind of uh, confusing to say what's positive about fighting and what's the, in terms of principle, what does that entail? Well, when a person throws a punch, the person is trying to do damage, he's trying to assault me. 
right? My block is a means, it's a negative move that he's making. My block is a positive move. My block is a means to, def to deflect any negative uh, uh, results from him striking me. So the, this is negative, the person being aggressive, and my defensive po is a positive move because I'm, I'm defending self. That's why they call it self-defense. I'm defending any harm that may come to me in that sense. So my block is, is a positive move. And that's how you got to think. And when a person is in, when a person is at rage, you just just compose and just you fix. Because when you're in rage, if you become enraged, he's angry, you angry, then you lose all sight, all sense of consciousness, and all you're doing is fighting. And then you're just hoping that you know, you know, you you you're, you're hoping that your, your your punch is effective, but you're not focused. So you don't know what if it's but you're not even concentrating and focusing your power. You see, so your power and your force and everything is all over the place, you know? Instead of like when the person comes, you block and then you focus your power and you pick that point and your speed or whatever uh, or your position allows you, you know, to neutralize the situation, okay? You get that? You guys get that? It wasn't over your head, right? Okay. So, because that's what you have to understand is martial art is not just all physical. Martial art is a science. And a science is a body of knowledge. You know, that has that have been tested, it has been tested, you know, and it has come to a, some conclusion. He said, so martial art that over the years, thousands of years, have come to this point of understanding. All of what you do, all the moves that you make have been tested. You see, you all you're doing is duplicating those things that has already been tested in respect to fights and battles and you know, combat. Okay? Alright, now let's after all that. There's, there's different forms of blocks. And you, you see karate blocks, Chinese blocks, all different types of blocks here. In most cases, we, go, we start out, you see here, they say, nobody's gonna attack like that. Well, of course, we know that. But you have to learn. You have to start from a, a learning point. This is a teaching point. We know nobody's gonna attack like that, per se. You know? Or somebody could attack like that. I've seen a guy. I seen it in the, in the, on YouTube, a guy just did like this, and the guy came and he attacked like that. So it was a possibility. So you never say, no one's never gonna do something. You're always ready for all the possibilities, in that sense. So this is the basic forms here, basic form. Now you notice, you know, with Sensei, you know, he's a, you know, when I tell him to get back in his stance, he's back in his stance and it's natural. You see his form, it's, it's not half-hearted. And he's right in position, so you don't see him standing like this here, like I see some of the belts doing, and it's, you know, it, it, it takes time. But he goes right into his form, because this is the form that we're operating from. This is form, this is kanai, this is zempo, or zempo chirach, front stance, right? And this is the hand in the chamber, you know, this is the middle point of the chamber, uh, chodan, yeah, and this is jiran, and this is you know, these are high point, low point, middle point, high point. Now, in karate, you'll see, you know, if he punches, if he punches to the head, you'll see this in karate, you know. This is Joranuki. This is, uh, Joranuki is a rising block, rising high block from here. And then if he punches from the middle, here, <coughs> Joranuki, middle block. Here. And if he punches downward, Jiran, <coughs> downward block, here. We're not learning karate, per se, but everything is relative. Everything is related. Systems are roots of each other. Now, in our system, we move naturally. Every move is done naturally. Here, here, here you have to make adjustments to punch like this. You, you normally your arm is not in this position. Your arm is not in this position. You have to make yourself fashion your arm. So this is this is something that is fashion here that is not natural. In ninjutsu, everything is done natural, natural move. Now my arms are normally at a elongated <coughs> position down by my side from here. When I'm confronted with a fight, or somebody's coming up, or somebody's hostile, you know, 
normally I'm not going to throw my guard right away unless I know that the fight is obvious, it's inevitable. So I got, you know, okay, I throw, you know, throw my guard from there. But sometimes it's just an argument. So sometimes, so what is it? What we do is we practice from the natural position because that's the new position that you be. 99.9% .9 of the time, this is what you're going. This is how you're going to be in, in in life and walking in your daily affairs. This is the way you're going to be. Your arms are going to be down here. Your legs are going to be here. Your stance is going to be like this. Here. You're not going to be walking down the street like this, right? You don't walk down the street like that, you know, unless you're getting ready to fight. So you walk down the streets like this. So you got to be able from this position to defend yourself because this is the, 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 the ultimate position that you're always going to be in, this position. So this is what ninjas understood, that they have to work from the natural. So here, now you saw the other blocks. Now. Um, our high block ice, is here. This is natural. This is natural for me to throw my arms up from this position rather than here. And this is quicker. And also, if you notice, I'm already in position to, to strike. So I'm not here. Here, I'm not in position to strike just the block, but this is in position to strike. So it's like sequence. Sequential movements, one, two. But here is one move. Here is one move. Block, boom, strike. And I can strike. Now, a lot of times, I'll, you see how the sword is? A lot of our strikes come from long strikes. Sword strikes, we call them. Or sword hands. Show them, you know, shuto, can. These are, these are positions in which it follows the pattern of a sword. Here, a lot of jujitsu, aikijitsu, aikido, follows the pattern of striking. That's why when you see an aikido, you see them strike like this, right? They strike like that, they strike with the sword. Sometimes you see an aikido, hirimi and agi, when you see the person strikes, he, he catches the print and then he strikes sword. So our position is also, jujitsu comes from the sword. The locks, movements from the sword. So here, we're working from this position here. So, and you notice my stands aside. I'm not standing here where I'm exposed. I'm square off here, too much exposure. I wanna make sure I give him a less of a target. At the same time, I block. Now, I'm not just blocking, but I'm attacking the arm. So if I can put that arm out of commission, if I can strike him, if I can strike him in, in his forearm, in that nerve center here, if I can strike him in his muscle, I make him loosen up here. At least that point, I take that out of commission. And sometimes when that's out of commission, he may come with that. But if this body, is, this side of the body is not working properly, he doesn't have as much strength. Because to have strength, you need, you, you need your whole anatomy. You need your whole anatomy to be a part of it. You hear people get, uh, and they'll try to strike with one arm, yeah. But I'm ready for it. But this, the, the, the creation is a serious creation. The human creation, the human body, is no joke. It can take an extreme amount of punishment, extraordinary amount of punishment. You see people get, you hear on you know news, he got shot four or five times and he still will come. He's got he got stabbed six or seven times, he still came. They say didn't I seen I seen a video. Guy came in with a uh, guy came with a knife and he, and they was hitting him with everything, all the chairs and the poles and that, and it didn't phase him. He was still coming, and they were cracking him. They they it wasn't just like hitting him. They were they were actually coming down on him. The body is an extraordinary tool. It's an extraordinary creation. You have to know how to deal with it, and that's why you can't just you see in the MMA and and the Ultimate Fighting. These guys is pounding on each other, and they still coming. They still coming. So the thing is, is that that's not the kind of art, even though it's a sport. But I'm looking for something a little more scientific, a little, a little more enhancing, a little more thorough in respect to effectiveness. So when I, hopefully, when I strike that person, you know, and I hit him in a certain area, 
there's no way he can't he can't condition himself. There's no putting muscles in nerve centers. If I hit you in a nerve area, all it's gonna do. Why? Because you can't help that nerve. You know, you because you got those nerve centers going to that brain, and you disturb and you disrupt that area. It automatically shoots to the brain, and there's nothing you can do about it. There's no control over it because that's why you got these nerve channels in there, and these nerve centers, and, and those are the certain centers that you know causes signals to go to the brain back and forth. You strip that down, there's no signal coming to the brain. If I take oxygen away from him. You you have to you can't move without oxygen. There's no there's no function without oxygen in, in the body. So if I can take the oxygen out of a person, then I can shut them down for for whatever amount of time is necessary. And that's why when you hit in that area where people get knocked out, boom, it's a jolt. That's a nerve center. The jolt, boom, the brain, the brain. You hit concussion, boom, brains. You know because you know you got room in there. The brain, the brain is just hitting this hitting around in, in the skull, and it causes, boom, unconsciousness. So this is the things that you have to learn. So here, listen, hit, hit, I'm striking, boom, and immediately I strike. Now I can do it here, hit, I can strike, block, strike. Here, fist, open hand, from here. So what I like to do is, you notice my stance is here. I'm straight arm. I'm hitting that nerve center right there in that forearm. Here, or if I come, I hit to the, the muscle. But I want to make sure that he's not able to, what? He's not able to penetrate my defense, even if he throws a hook. You see? He has to throw a hook. He has to meet. I get, I get this part where, where it's, it's not flexible. If I get in too far, he can throw the hook because I got into the inside the elbow, the, the form, here, boom, right, no, sorry, here. So I gotta always remember, <clears throat> you see, and then it opens him up. You see, I stopped him from here, <laughs> he went there. Before he can withdraw, mm, I snatch, I seize the, the moment, and I snatch. And then I go into my Akijitsu or Mutodori, my locks, here. And what I do is I can further hopefully further the, the rupture, the rupture here, or dislocate the elbow from here. And then from here, I can throw from there. Let's, all right? So we're working from here, here, and I want you to strike from here. Hey. Then I want you to capture, break it. You see, notice this where I hit. I'm not playing around. Now, I don't want to kill him. I don't have to. But I want to, I want to shut him down. Big guy, I ain't got time to play with. I know what shut him down. So I, I can even tap him here. What's that? And that's what I want. At least to that point. So I know that there's enough pressure without, because if I crush it, I kill him. And I don't need to kill him unless deadly force is applied from him towards me, then I have a right. But at least I can shut him down. So people like hitting here, here, and he can take that. And here, he can take, boom, come back, take that, here. But once I hit him, once I hit him here, and if I hit him in, what area? What area is that? No. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Sinus. Sinus. Say sinus, but sinus. Now you know when you get hit here, right? You know what happens, right? Break what happens? Break your nose. You can break your nose, but the person can still fight with his nose, huh? Tears. Tears. Tears, you go blind. You know, you start tearing up, right? Because, it's the, again, that's connected to the brain and all these, here, yeah, the tear dubs and all that. Start coming in. So that, so that means just the, just, the, just the tears alone, but it, what follows after that? After that person's disorientated, and I hit him here, ah, you know, he can't see, then I can... I can work them the way I want. Inshallah. Okay, so. Here. Here. I strike. And then. I take the arm. See? Immediately. 
that I control and I can break. Come here. Goes right into it. See what I'm doing is he's coming, he's charging me, I'm moving that out the way, he comes right into either finger jab and a punch or a palm. Once I take that consciousness away, he drops, then I take the arm and I break or rupture, dislocate the shoulder, and then I take down concussion. Us? Us. Okay. To be continued.